Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist and we are still talking about the top 10 Tosca best practices. Now prior to this, we have already spoken about six best practices. So if you have not watched them, I would recommend you to go back to the playlist and watch all of these videos before we continue with this particular video. Now before we go ahead and talk about this best practice number seven, I would recommend you to also subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the upcoming videos on this very topic. And coming to this particular best practice, Trascendus recommends that you use folders for test steps. So what does it mean? We have already seen this in number of different examples, but our test steps should be grouped into different folders. Not only this makes it more readable, but the debugging also is pretty easy, which leads to easier maintenance. Now we'll see with an example how uh, this particular folder structure looks like for an actual test case. And what if you don't use the folders, right? So all the test steps could be under one test case or even one folder. Okay. So let's look at an example and then maybe we can understand this uh, much better, right? So coming back to Tosca, I am now going back to this particular test case for demo web shop where we have automated this for confirming the order, right? And this is the test case name. And then when I open this, you will see there are three folders, okay? Reprocessing, processing, and post-processing. Now this is also one of the best practices. You should have at least three main folders for your test case. One is the pre-processing, which will uh, have all the prerequisite steps, right? And then the processing, which will contain the actual test case scenarios. And then uh, the post processing, which is basically any cleanup you want to do or log out, right? So these kind of steps will be contained inside post processing, right? Pre processing could be just opening the URL or logging into the website, right? And then inside processing, so that's the main folder inside this you will see there are lots of other folders now this could be divided based on the page of the application or the functionality or the steps of your test case so you can do this any way you like but there should be a certain structure right and you should build folders for steps which belong to at least one functionality or maybe one page of the application so for example here um, I have grouped my registration uh, scenario right inside one folder and then all the steps related to registering a user are contained inside this folder right similarly for login user for uh, products add products to cart and then uh, going to the shopping cart checking out um, filling all these details like billing shipping address uh, shipping method right um for confirming the order and then verifying the pdf order information right now you can also make more folders as you like inside the folder you can again make subfolders like here you can see this is a repetition folder right so that's why i've kept it inside another folder i have some if condition and uh, if your test steps are getting too lengthy or there are more test steps you can basically create more folders right in order to create a folder it's very simple just right click and just create a folder and then group your test steps logically okay the advantage of this you can see here it looks much better it is much readable for any particular um, person who is trying to view your test case he can easily make out what is going on in this test case and what is the test case flow which test steps are inside which folder right the other advantage of this is uh, while we execute this okay or we are running different executions if something fails in some step right and we navigate from the execution list to our test case we can easily make out right looking at the test step which particular functionality it is linked to looking at the folder name so if i got an error or some some problem right during registration I can directly come here and then I can uh, modify my steps, right? So basically, I can fix my tests more easily 
and much faster if you have a structure like this right and your test steps are grouped into different folders if you have something like this okay here you can see um, all the test steps are inside just a test case so there is no folder structure right now if something fails i need to go through each test step and try to find out uh, which particular test step is failing right also it doesn't look readable right um, there is no uh, test case flow here and uh, even we don't even know um, like where we are logging into the website where we are going into the shopping cart where we are adding the books right where we are checking out which checkout exactly right so it's not readable uh, for um, a newcomer or any other person who is trying to work in this particular test case right so keeping in mind that you'll be working in a team and there will be other team members who will be referring to your test cases it is always a best idea to create different folders and then logically group your test steps into each folder okay so that's the best practice which is recommended by Tracentis and you should be following it if you are working on a real project um, with a number of test cases which has got lots of different test steps better to group them into folders so that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and do leave any comments if you have any questions on this particular best practice we have lots more videos coming up so keep watching and keep learning